Hey guys, Kyle here with Gnarly Knives, and today I actually want to finally do that sharpening tutorial video that I've talked about a few times in different videos. We're going to be sharpening the Rat 2 by Ontario Knives. This is the D2 version. Uh, I'm just going to go over quickly just the stones I'm going to be using. Um, these are stones I've been using for quite a long time now, and I have found great success with. Uh, one of which, this one here, is the Smith's Trihone Sharpener. Um, I have done a full review on this. Uh, probably two months or so ago um, so for more information about this stone I definitely recommend you check that out we're also going to be using this is the first stone I ever got this is also a Smith's double-sided stone um, the coarser side is I believe 100 grit and then it's either 220 or 240 on the top <coughs> excuse me I'm just gonna really just need the 220 side um, the coarser 100 grit side I really only use that if I'm doing uh, edge reprofiling for you know higher end steel something like you know ZDP S110 something like that or if there's a serious chip or roll but this 220 does a great amount of work um, I'd probably use the 220 side probably three or four times for every one time I use the other um, and then also we're going to be using, it's actually soaking right now, is the King KDS 1000-6000 grit. That is a great stone. Um, and then we will finish off with this. Actually, I got this one off Amazon. It is a, well, it's a 3000-10000 grit um, that I got off Amazon. is about 10 bucks from the company and self. And out of the 3000 side, I mean, it, it it's okay. Um, but it just, I don't know, just something, the materials that are in it, you can just feel they're just some weird spots, um, like non-abrasive so much, just, I don't know how to really explain it, but I don't really like using the 3000 side, but the 10,000 side is absolutely perfect. This stone I probably use more than anything, solely because I use this for a lot of touch-ups. Um, but so these are the stones we'll be using. Um, I do have other stones, but these are the ones that I like the most. Um, I do have a bunch of these you can get on Amazon. Um, I have two. This is Bear Moo. Uh, this is a 400 1000 grit. Don't really use it that often. Once in a while, I will. Um, I mean, it's, it's an okay stone, um, but it just the wears very, very quickly. And I don't know, I just I find I have better results with the other ones. Um, I also have a couple from uh, Blue Sun, about the same. Um, I, they're, they're definitely not true grits, because um, even when I first got I tried to do like mirror polishes with them, because they go up to 8,000 grit, or they claim to go up to 8,000, I just haven't found that to be the case. Uh, I mean, my 6,000 grit from the KDS King feels much smoother than even the 8,000, um, but... Out of the four of them that I got, this 400-1000, I'd say, is decent. This one I would recommend um, for the most part, but I will do a video talking about these and how uh, sometimes, you know, you do get what you pay for, cheap. Sometimes you do get cheap stuff versus where this one, this is a cheap stone, but it's a very good stone. Um, I mean, I'll probably have to be getting another one soon. You can see it is pretty worn down, um, you know, it's just, but it's a pretty hard stone. So it has been able to keep that going or keep lasting for as long as it has. You know, I've had that stone probably about three years now. It's been with me since the beginning. I'm actually going to throw it back into the water quick. And then we will get started um, on the trihone. Um, right now, today, I'm just going to be using the 600 grit. Um, it does have the 400. The 400, it's, it's okay. It's not too bad. Um... These two do wear pretty quickly, but the 600 I use the most. The 1000 is a very, very good stone, um, but it's it's a very hard stone. It is not worn at all. And this is one I've mentioned in other videos that when these wear out, I'm going to try and carefully break this out and make this, and I'm going to turn this into an oil stone. Um, the instructions say that you can use oil or water. Um, for what I understand, they're better recommended for oil. Um, these two, the coarse and medium, I don't think really makes a difference. Um, but this with the water it does clog up so I'll usually use a little bit of soap to kind of mimic that and that actually works pretty good but it does tend to load up fairly quickly but like I said it hasn't worn at all and it 
honestly you can get amazing edges off of it but i want to i don't know do a nice pretty edge for you guys and then two i would really recommend for anyone um these nagura stones tons of different companies make them this one is by king um you can see it's very worn you know this thing was probably i don't know like an inch square when i first got it uh probably like a year and a half ago but this really isn't so much for leveling and flattening the stones this really is good for kind of cleaning them up this one actually works great on the 1000 so when i sharpen on that a bit i can clean it up a bit and then just go from there um but this one is not bad i think you can get this for like six seven bucks and i'd recommend it when this is fully wearing out i'm definitely going to get more I'll probably get a couple just for that price it really can't be beat so the stand i'm going to set off to the side we're not going to need that until we hit the 600 so we'll start off with this 220 here the 220 240 i'm not really sure exactly what it is now Oh, and I also like to keep a little bucket with extra water so I can just kind of keep the stone moist, wet, what have you. Um, and then all stones are a little bit different. Some of them are, you have to soak for a while, they have different soak times. Um, they, I don't know, they should all come with and say what, or how long you should soak them. Um, this one, I remember with the box it came in, didn't say... I would recommend if you're not sure or if it's like a set of old stones that you got and you know obviously the directions or box are probably long gone I would say soak it until the bubbles stop and then go from there um, some stones like when I got the kingstone it said to, it recommended soaking for 15 minutes so that's what I usually do um, but I would say that's probably a good base to go from there if you're not sure how long to soak it um, and then, of course, obviously, if it's an oil stone and the oil's been used on it, it's kind of more or less you kind of stuck with it as an oil stone. I mean, I haven't really tried cleaning an oil stone, but, you know, oil and water don't mix. So I would say pick one and stick with that. Um, well, I mean, with the stone, if you stick with water, but once you go to oil, you're probably better off sticking with oil. So it's enough of that. We'll get going with this here. Um... I will be talking while I'm going through and doing this. Um, there will be some spots where I'm just going to be working, but I'll discuss what it is I'm doing. Um, so the first thing I'm just going to say is that edge angle doesn't necessarily matter too, too much. The biggest thing is just consistency. So you want to try and hold it at the same angle on both sides. And then once you get that good, I don't know if dexterity or muscle memory rather is probably the better way to put it of being able to hold a set angle roughly then you can start if you really want to start messing with lower angles now that's something I like to kind of mess with now but when I first started I just stuck with factory bevels and then continued on from there this one here we are gonna bring in just a little bit um, the bevel on this it's, it's not bad it's still the factory edge but I just wanna I just like a little more slicing and then you know being D2 I'm pretty I feel pretty comfortable it will handle any of the more a little more extreme angle if you will so I would say just pick a side and just start slow I would say if possible try to use as much of the stone as you can while you're sharpening it'll help without getting all those bows in them I mean this stone here does have a pretty good bow because like I said it was from when I first started sharpening and you know before I really understood that um, so I'm with this one I'm probably not gonna too much stay with so what I generally do with this one because it's so bowed um, and I've tried flattening it it's just it's a very hard stone and I've just really worn out what I used to flatten with um, so what I'll do is I'll like flip around when I do the sides but, so we're gonna pick an angle that we like so I'll usually start doing a few passes and then we'll start going up towards the belly and the tip. And what I like to do too is I like to keep a finger up on the tip. So then that way, one, I can help me control. But also, I can feel right when the tip is in contact with the stone. Because I have my finger so it's basically flush with the point. I mean, of course, you want to be careful. Don't want to cut yourself. But with all the times I've cut myself with knives, it's never been from sharpening. Not yet, anyway. And you want to just take your time. You're not in a rush. Or, you know, or especially, you know, you don't have to be in a rush. 
to see how we're looking now. And then I recommend to have a towel, paper cloth, uh, paper towel or something. You can get a good idea or something good you can keep. You can wipe the blade down so you can look at it. So now I want to take a look at it. See, I don't know if you guys will be able to see. So we're definitely taking out the old bevel. I haven't apexed yet. You will feel a burr. Um, for anybody that doesn't know, a burr is basically just when you're sharpening on one side, the metal will fold over onto the other side and you'll be able to feel it. Uh, one thing I've heard people do is you can take it and wipe it on a cloth or a Q-tip and then you'll be able to see the little fibers. I don't really do that. I just like doing the fingernail. So I'll just use a, one of my fingers. I don't know why I always use this finger. And I'll just feel, I'll just go up the edge and just uh, move my finger down the bevel and to see if it catches, which right now it's not, but we only just started the sharpening. So probably in a couple of minutes. And this stone does cut really fast and really well. So it really shouldn't take too long at all. And you just want to make sure you're getting the entire portion of the knife. You don't want to stay in one spot for too long. Just keep it moving. Um, sometimes you might have to spend a little more time in the belly area. Um, I found if, you know, if you're keeping a good motion going, then it shouldn't be an issue. But I just remember when I first started, that was one thing I ran into. I would get the uh, burrs, you know, on the straight portion and up by the tip. But then the belly wouldn't just because I wouldn't be spending enough time. Or I would just be going by too quickly. So. And you don't want to lift up the knife too much. What I'll just do is while I'm sharpening... Once I get to the belly, I'll just ever so slightly raise it, you know, so you don't want to round off your tip or anything like that. Just keep a nice steady motion going. Being careful to hold that bevel as best as you can, or that, yep, that angle on the bevel. All right. Should be getting close now. So we're starting to get a little bit of a burr on the tip. Not yet on the belly or the flat portion. But you can see though, hopefully you can kind of pick up so you can see how we're looking on this first side, how the tall the bevel is just compared to the other side hopefully you can kind of pick that up so we are definitely bringing this in a few degrees so yeah let's just kind of disperse it keep it clean if it starts getting really dirty sometimes i'll just dunk it in the water rub it real quick Get out of the way And I know it shows I'm moving really fast. It's not really so much that. It's just, I don't know, it's just kind of the speed at which I go. But I'm not trying to, you know, really force anything. And I'm not even putting that much pressure. Um, it's really mostly just the weight of my hands on it. And I don't want to either A, dig in and damage the stone. Or remove too much material from a certain area and this is really the longest part I find is just once you're setting your excuse me your bevel once you hit the apex you will more or less glide through the stones um, relatively quickly I mean unless you know depending on what it is you're trying to accomplish um, but generally you know you can either go you know if you're just trying to get a quick edge go till you hit the burr on both sides and progress or if you're trying to get a nice polish edge you know, you want to keep going on the stone, even if you've apexed, just keep going back and forth until you remove all the scratches from the previous stone. If you're going for a more polished, nicer looking edge, but for pure utility, it's really not an issue. Let's see, we're getting pretty close now. I 
just one spot in the middle of the blade where I haven't quite apexed. And, oh, and I probably should have said, I mean, I know most people who are watching this probably already know, but basically the apex is just where the two sides of your edges meet, or the, yeah, where the two angles of your edge meet. So, you know, if you're looking at the knife straight down this way, you'll be able to see the two bevels and where they meet in the middle. And then it's here at the tip or at the very, very edge where you'll get your fold over for your burrs. So let's just check this again real quick. And we've apexed and feel the burr all the way now. That's one little spot. And don't be afraid to go back, you know? Just take as much time as you need. You know, don't have to rush it. Do this on a time. Do this when you have some time. You can set aside. You don't have to worry about rushing and getting it done. There we go. See? Now I'm just going to dunk this quick. Just clean that side off. Really good. And then I'm flipping it around. We're going to use the other side now. So I'll try and keep it as even as possible. Well, actually... I'm going to do it the other side because I'm going to flip the knife around. So I'm going to just set the bowl of water to the side. All right, so again, you want to try and find your angle. And I would say when you're starting on the opposite side that you first started on, just do a few passes and then take a look at it and you'll be able to get an idea of where you're at. So I need to bring the angle down just a little bit to match where I did the first side. No, and then also too, I was just thinking, um, there are different ways, you know, of course there's a bunch of different techniques for sharpening. I mean, I personally like the back and forth, the push and pull strokes, but I will when I'm finishing up on the stone because you will get kind of like wavy looks on the edge. Then I'll do the single strokes to kind of even out the edge. Now some people just do single strokes per side and versus the back and forth. That's purely up to you. I do a combination of both and I've had pretty good success with that. But I would say, you know, try them out. Try all the different techniques out and you'll find what works for you. Everybody's got a little different way of doing it, but you'll find it. All right. All right, so we've apexed, but the angle is a little different. So even though I've apexed and I have the burr, I'm gonna go back at a little bit lower angle now so I can even them out. All right, so we'll just quickly rinse, get that crud off, and we're back in business. And it's best to do this now on the lower stone. The higher stone you go, the higher grit, it's just gonna be more work. And then at some point you're probably gonna be like, damn, I have to redo it and you're just gonna have to go back to the lower grit stone. So I find it's just best just do it now. And you'll save yourself a lot of work in the end. And then being the lower grit stone, it's going to remove the material faster. I mean, I don't know if it works out quite the same. So say this is a 220 grit and I'm on, you know, just say it's a 200 grit and I'm working on a 1000 grit. I don't know. I feel like it's more than just, oh, it's five times faster. It feels like it's probably a little more than that. I mean, not that you can't, you know, reprofile or do any of this stuff. I mean, I guess you theoretically could do it on like a 10,000 grit stone, but it's just going to take you a long, long time. All right. Okay, that's looking much better now, much more even. And then another thing I would say is, especially when you're doing reprofiling, you know, of course you want to look, you know, make sure the edge bevels look even on both sides. But another thing is, what I'll do is I will look at the tip. You know, I'll clean it off, I'll look at, I'll put it up against something to kind of contrast and make sure the tip is even. 
So we have a little unevenness, just need a little bit more work on the right side of the knife just to bring the tip in just so that we have an even tip <laughs> but this is just all part of that just take your time and don't just focus straight on the tip itself just kind of work back and forth from the belly because you can just it'll just look really weird and um you won't get that same level of cutting or piercing potential. Give it a couple more passes. And I'm just kind of going back and forth from the belly and the tip. But you want to not go spend too, too much time. Because I've done that before too. Uh, now we're nice and even. But I've done it before too where... You know, I'll have the angle like this here and like that there, and then I'll bring this in, and then now this one is way off. So just take your time. If you have to do it, you know, do it for a couple seconds, stop, look, go back. But now we are right where we want to be. Now the next few stones, we're just going to fly right through. So now we're going to do those single strokes, or the push strokes solely so just to kind of clean up the burr and then just feel you can feel with your finger you can do it with your fingernail so actually that got it all there maybe do another um, and at this point you don't necessarily really need to worry about the, you know, five times this side, five times that side. When I'm finishing up, when I'm finishing on the stones, especially the last stone, is when I'll do more of the, you know, five and five, three and three, whatever. Um, just so I even it out even more. But this here is just more, I just want to get rid of the bevel, uh, get rid of the, um, the burr. How are we doing? All right. Let's take a quick. Oh, got a little bit of burr on that belly still. And of course, you know, on the next stone, it will take the belly, the burr off. But I don't know. I'd rather just get it off so then I can just go right to work. All right. So we're all done with this stone. I'm gonna put it back in. Just clean it off quick. Now set that to the side. Won't need this for a little while. I'll set that off to the side. Oops. And then we're going to use the stand. We're going to jump on the 600. And then we're going to move to the 1,000 after that. All right. So this stone here I actually just flattened uh, yesterday. Um, I don't flatten my stones all that often. Um, I think some people make it out to be more... Uh, more of a necessity than it really is. I mean, of course, if you have massive bows and flat and high spots, then yeah. Um, but for most things, I really only do. I mean, honestly, I probably flatten my stones maybe two or three times a year, if that. Um, and by stones, I mean, I don't sit and do each individual one in a single setting. It'll just be I'm like, all right, yeah, it's probably getting ready to be done um, but you know unless you're doing stuff like straight razors or if you sharpen tools like chisels and anything then yeah you definitely want your flat your stone as flat as possible but the doing stuff like this isn't quite as important you know at least in my experience all right so Let's take a look now. There we go. See, just that few seconds. You know, we spent maybe a minute on this stone. We have apexed again. Well, we've in. Well, yeah. I mean, yes, yeah. We take. We've apexed again, and we pushed the burr right back over. I'm just gonna get it even. All right. I'm happy with that. So now, actually, let's take the water. Just. 
kind of clean some of this off a bit. And then we can finish up, and we're actually about ready to go on to the thousand. And you can see I'm trying to use as much as the stone as possible just to even out any wear. Ooh. Alright, didn't get myself, but alright, the edge is good. And it's one of the things too why you know, like I say, you don't want to rush, take your time. Um, and then also too, I mean we can I'll try and go into a little bit more when we're talking about doing the those finishing single strokes or push strokes if possible you don't want to run your tip off the edge you want to do it and then stop before you come off the end um, because you can either snap off the little sharpened tip of the edge or just round it over by dinging the side of the stone so it's just something so you want to go slow when you do that but yeah, we're looking pretty damn good. So now we're gonna make sure we're taking that burr off completely on this side. And also evening out the sharpening itself, the edge. Actually use a little bit up by the tip. And we've pushed the burr over to that side. And this edge is starting to look really, really good now. Pretty happy with that. And then you can see too, I mean, of course you are removing material, but this here, this is metal and also parts of the stone. Um, so that's another reason why you do want to take your time. I mean, every time you're sharpening, you are removing material, you know, and it is possible. I, I have talked about a little bit in other videos uh, but you can over sharpen a knife that is a possibility but you also you know because you're removing material it is possible to eventually just get to a point where you just can't sharpen it anymore there's really nothing left to but I mean important in maintaining those angles now let's take a look and see. I'm getting pretty close. Still have a teeny bit of burr. All right. All right, so now we've got that. I'm just gonna give it a few passes each side just to take away any scratch marks and just clean up that edge and just minimize the bevel so just kind of take a feel now I'll use my dry hand and that's really grabbing and so this is oh it's very pointy so this is the 600 grit see if we'll get it to shave at all <coughs> excuse me Actually, it is shaving a little bit. Ooh, just cut myself. That's why you want to look at what you're doing and not see, not look at the camera while shaving. But yeah, so and it's only gonna get sharper. All right, so now this is all set. Um, and like I said, a lot of times I will use this stone. I do like this stone, but. Ever since I got the King 1000, 6000, I just, I love that stone. I love using it. So, I'm going to take this, dump the water out, and just set this off to the side for now. All right. I'm actually going to just clean this up a little bit. And what's cool too is some people like using the having a little bit of slurry while they sharpen it helps polish a bit um this king stone um when i ordered it says it's eight thousand grit um i don't know if you could sharpen on this i think this is a little too soft to sharpen on um but you know maybe when i get another one we can attempt it with this one just for uh kicks see how that works but 
I don't want to try it on it now and ruin it and then be out of one until I get another one. All right. Yeah, just kind of clean all that up. So now this is a the like I said these I love these stones and I will be doing a full review in the very near future of the one thousand six thousand. Um, but the I wouldn't describe them necessarily as soft stones, um, but it is easy I've noticed to damage them. And by that, I just mean if you lift up your edge a little too much, you can dig into the stone. Or your tip, you can put like these, I don't know, snail marks or whatever, divots in them. Um, just as opposed to some other stones where that won't necessarily be an issue. Um, but this is just such a great stone. So keeping true with want to move around as much as we can using as much of the stone as possible I mean when you first start out I mean don't worry too too much about it I mean you're just really going for results the stone is merely just a tool and especially if they're cheaper ones they're easier to replace but uh, see now that edge is looking really good let's see if we've oh yeah see with bird not the bear so the bear is the word so we're gonna go over to this side and this really is a nice stone to use I'll just take a quick look see that's starting to look nice to clean off the other side Oh yeah, see, and we've already, now we've apexed both sides in a minute, maybe, you know, so it, actually this will use a little water, clean it up a bit, and then we'll go and clean up the edge, so, just remember, just keep that angle. I mean, it might be easier when you're first starting to just do these pushing strokes. It might be easier to, for you to hold that angle versus the back and forth motion. Um, and then if you want, you can kind of experiment and go from there. Still have a little bit of burr, so I'm going to keep going. Remember just to take your time. It's not a race. It's like that kid story there, the slow and steady one's the race, or the tortoise and the hare, I think. Alright. Pretty happy with that thing. Let's get some water on it. Keep putting more water on it. That's looking really good. So now, go to this other side. Just doing the same thing, just taking our time. And you can get really, really good results. You know, I mean, like I said, you don't need to spend tons of money on this, especially if you're starting out, you don't know if it's something you're going to really get into or enjoy doing. That's why I really recommend that Smith's um, Tri Hone Sharpener because it's 25 to 30 bucks. I've never seen it go over 30. And you get three good stones, a stand. I mean, you really can't go wrong. You know, I'm just feeling, making sure, getting rid of the burr. I'll go on to the other side. Now, here I'm not really counting. I'm just kind of what feels right. And I think that feels right. Be more careful this time. Taking out some hairs, but not too many. But that means to me, though, that it will definitely be shaving when we're done. So, finished up the 1,000. Just give this a quick 
because this 6000 I notice likes to clog up a little bit I mean, it's not as bad as the 1000 on the other stone uh, the other the Smith's one but I just find this I just need to clean it definitely more often than the six the 1000 grit and it could also just be because it's very fine but my 10,000 doesn't seem to really clog up like that so I don't know so this here now especially on this stone I'm just using very little pressure now I'll show you in a second you can see all of the material that's coming off and this is a 6,000 grit you know so all this that gray is metal it's still removing material I mean we're not quite it's moving very little material um, I also like to flip my stones around keep them even but we're not really so much sharpening at this point as we're just polishing we'll take a look in a second see how we're looking here and it's good just to stop every once in a while Oh, we're getting a nice polish there. I don't know how well you can really. It might be easier when I do the other side. And we even do even have ever so slight of a burr. I mean, the finer the stone, the smaller the burr is going to be, unless you're just sitting there on one side, really going to town. There we go. Taking a time. I want to do a good job. And you might be able to tell too, the stone is much quieter, the 6,000, compared to the 1,000. And especially when we started on the 220 or even that 600. Alright, so let's. So we've gotten rid of that burr. Actually, we've pushed it to the other side. So we fully apexed, but I can still see some scratches. I'm trying to clean it off on my shirt. Don't mind me. I got all like dirt and stuff, or the stone metal shavings on my shirt. Um, might not be a bad idea if you want to wear an apron or something like that. But that is looking pretty good. So we'll flip it over. Now we're just going to work on just getting more of those scratches out. And you don't have to go this high. I mean, I honestly, I, I, I've said it before in other videos. I think a 1,000 grit is a perfect edge. It's very utilitarian. You know, it gives you a good amount. Well, I mean, you can get a razor shaving sharp. I mean, you know, we saw in the 600 grit that was shaving. You know, I think a 1,000, between like 1 and 2,000 is really, to me, is that is right on the cusp of sharpening and polishing maybe more the 2000 but 1000 you can get a really nice looking edge but it's very very functional it's very bitey it grabs very well and then you know of course the higher grits the smoother the edge will be but you don't always need the super high polished edges. Oh, that's feeling really good. So I'm going to just dunk this quick. Just kind of clean that stuff off. We'll do our single push strokes. Then we'll go to the 10,000. You know, and I do want to get more stones to fill in these gaps. Um, I mean, it's not a huge, huge deal. I mean, I can still get pretty good mirror edges on the system doing just what I'm doing now but you just have to it just means I have to spend more time I'm actually looking into in the next probably couple months so not Christmas but like around my birthday stuff like that and my girl makes fun of me I like getting myself gifts um, but I'm thinking yeah, but my birthday is a couple weeks after Christmas so I'm thinking of doing just say I've been setting a little cash aside until then. And I actually want to get a nice set of... I'm actually really looking at the 
uh, Shapton Pro Series, the Hano Kukamura, I believe it's pronounced. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I've seen a lot of videos on them, and I really haven't seen too much bad about them. Everybody, everything I've seen about them, people have seemed to like them. Um, but I am also considering... Overall, for the number of stones that I want to get, it'll probably be a difference of about 100 to 150, which is a bit of a jump. Um, but I'm also thinking and looking at the Shapton glass stones. Well, I mean, the, the ceramic that you sharpen on, but the backing on them is glass. But those cost a good amount more. But it's just going to be more what I have the cash for at the time. Um... I know I'll be happy either way and it's something that you know I've been sharpening for a good long time now and you know I think I'm ready to take the next step up but it is a hell of a price jump you know even when I bought this king one um, this one was a uh, 45 you know and that was a you know, the most expensive stone I had paid for before that was that Trihome, which I got for like 27 bucks or 25 bucks, I think, when I picked it up at Walmart. All right, so let's take a look now. So I think we're done with the 10, 000, the 6,000. Oh, that's looking like a nice polish. It's a very bitey edge. Let's take a look. Oh, here you can see battle scars from earlier. All right, so let's let's go right up in here. So you can kind of see a little. We're getting some hairs. Of course, we haven't stropped yet, but it's probably still a little bit of a burr on one of the sides. Now, we're all done with this. Oh, sorry. We're going to go on to the 10,000 now. This year will be very quick. Because I'm just more or less. I just want to bring up a little bit with that polish. And just put a little more of that razor edge onto it. And I'm using very, very, very little pressure. Just making sure I'm... Holding that angle, because that really is the most important thing, is just consistency with the angle. And once you get good consistency with holding your angles, then you can go nuts and worry about, you know, I'm going to sharpen at this angle or that angle or whatever angle. Because once you get good consistency and able to hold that angle and the muscle memory and all that, then you'll be able to really go to town. Yeah, that's just, we're bringing it up, Just that's just next level. I'm using little bits of pressure. I mean, it's a small stone, so it's easy to use all of it. Alright. Getting ever so slight of a burr. Well, let's just clean that off a bit. Now the burr on this is very, very tiny. You almost can't even feel that it's there. And this is really a great stone. This stone here I use honestly when um, I'm just touching up an edge. If maybe I've just gone a little too long or just did a little more work with it that um then a straw can bring back to where i like it i'll give it some passes on this and i won't even do the passes like that the uh, back and forth the push and pull strokes i'll actually show you in a minute okay now is where it's really important. You want to make sure you get the burr. 
Because when you're going up through the stones, you know, the next stone will take care of the burrs, but... So this is what I was saying, how I'll do it. I mean, this is not saying like this is how you have to do it, but when I'm just doing the touch up or I'm finishing, I'll just do the passes like this. Just making sure. I'm just keeping with that angle. And you can almost kind of feel that burr as it's coming off. And you just go as much as you feel like you need. Having a nice, sharp, beautiful, crisp edge. So, I, know, I just have like no hair on my arms anymore. Um, let's see. So you can pick up on. And this is not even strapped yet, but that's the 10,000. Oop. Yeah, that's a little gross. You can see all the hairs. So we're done with the stone. Oh, that's sharpening uh, shit on the. All right. Actually, well, we better bring it over this way. So what I use is very low tech. This is just a strip of leather, and then this here is some jeweler's rouge. This stuff works awesome. I think I got this for like eight bucks. I got this over a year ago, and you can see how much has actually been used. Like, this lasts a long, long time. I, it, my kids will be using this after I'm gone, I feel. So I'll just give it a few. Now, you don't need to, every time you strop, just I've stropped quite a few knives since the last time that I've put a little compound on it. Uh, but generally, I don't know. So I'll probably do like four or five, maybe six times dropping before I'll add a little more on. Um, because you can load up the leather, then you just have to clean the leather, and it's just a pain. So if I can avoid it as much as I can, I'm going to try to bring you guys down here so you can see a little better. And then eventually I will get a stropping block. But I'll just hold it on the edge of a table or whatever it is I'm stropping on. And you want to... Do it at a lower angle than you sharpened at. So just for example, say if you sharpened at this angle, you want to just bring it in a little bit lower because the metal will, the leather will conform to the bevel. And it is possible to uh, kind of round over your apex there. And just kind of go back and forth. Now this here you don't have to really be too, too particular with. And just use light pressure. It's really just like the weight of the knife. You know, and the compound does, will remove little small amounts of material. But that's what I'm saying with um, it being possible to round over your apex. So of course you don't want to do that. You know, and then, I mean, there's tons of different stropping techniques. I mean, it doesn't really matter. You know, as long as you're getting the results, you can try out. Make sure you're getting the whole edge. So let's take a look. I'm going to pick up. Kind of show the. You know, picking up the light from the camera a little bit. See what I can do to you got this old Three Stooges coffee mug. Any Three Stooges ones? See if you can kind of uh, nah, it's not really showing up. I'm sorry, but it is mirrored. Um, actually, maybe the tattoo. No, 
don't know. There's going to be like a 20 minute extras on the video just to show. But. Oh. Let's see, how does it shave? Now that we've strapped. Um, effortlessly. Sweet. And I'll usually just give that a little, just kind of clean that up there. Alright guys, so that's it. If you guys have any more questions, I mean, I can do more videos like this using different stones. Maybe try out some different techniques. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, you know, let me know. You know, we start up a good discussion about it. You know, I, that's how you learn. You know, I mean, I'm, it's one of those things, I don't think you ever learn everything. You just keep learning more and more. So I'd love to hear any of you guys' ideas or techniques, stuff that you guys do. But uh, remember, to, uh, keep carving and stay sharp. And please like, comment, subscribe. Check us out on Instagram, Gnarly Knives. And you guys have a good rest of your weekend. And just, yeah, like I said, you know, stop by, leave a comment. You know, maybe we can have a good talk or you had a bunch of people talking about sharpening and such. But you guys, stay awesome. Peace.